gentlemen, and thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, it is my pleasure to present you uh, this evening what Hungary does when it comes to sustainability, water diplomacy, and water technology solutions. Some of you might wonder actually where Hungary is, because we are a small country, uh, located in the very heart of Europe, our capital is Budapest, the population is about 10 million inhabitants. We are members of the European Union, NATO and OECD. Um, the water supply coverage is actually close to 99%, which means almost everyone in the country has access to safe and clean drinking water. It is also an interesting fact that in Hungary, drinking water is the most checked commodity, which means there are very strict regulations by which the water service providers have to comply every day. Wastewater treatment is also above 90%. Of course, there are still some smaller villages um, where the infrastructure is still being constructed, but we can say that in almost every bigger village or city, the wastewater is treated before being discharged into the aquatic environment. Water has been always very important in our history, in our culture. Um, we have several rivers, several big lakes, uh, so we could consider Hungary as a water-rich country. Nevertheless, um, we have been facing some issues during the past decades. Um, about 98% of our waters are coming actually from neighboring countries, which means that the source of origin it is located in some of our uh, neighbors, uh, which requires, of course, very intensive water diplomacy and cooperation when it comes to these uh, uh, countries. And um, also, there is a problem of too much water and scarcity of water in Hungary. Due to climate change, we are facing um, a lot of problems these days. For example, since 1998, um, the record-breaking floods have struck nine times um, in our great rivers, although only twice in the previous 50 years, which means that previously in one century, maybe we only had one of these uh, incredibly high floods, whereas they are becoming more and more frequent, uh, so to say after every two to three years, we are facing floods during the spring and early summertime. But at the same time, we are also facing a shortage of precipitation, especially in the summer season, that also puts a lot of pressure on the agriculture. So the Hungarian companies and service providers had to come up with some innovative, sustainable, and green technologies when it comes to water treatment. Our, our company has... Uh, several members that are active, let it be municipal, industrial, water and wastewater treatment, um, process control and automation. We are providing drinking water services, industrial water treatment services, municipal wastewater treatment services, um, industrial wastewater treatment services, and uh, we also have some containerized solutions. When it comes to the design of these technologies, we always pay attention to minimize the consumption of chemicals and electricity as much as possible. We are building in energy recovery systems into our technologies, and also we are using solar energy whenever it is possible. We have developed references all around the world during the past couple of decades, um, being present in more than 35 countries. And also, the Hungarian government is one of our close partners. Um, I would like to inform you that, for example, in the Hungarian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, we have a special department that is dedicated to water diplomacy. And we are doing together a lot of humanitarian water sector development projects all around the world in order to provide clean and safe drinking water to the most vulnerable. Um, we have completed projects in the past, for example, in uh, Ecuador. Um, also, we have uh, one interesting project from the region, from Iraq. Um, a small village that is uh, located near Mosul uh, was destroyed 
due to the events that happened during the previous years. And um, the Hungarian government donated a containerized water treatment compact unit that is supplying drinking water to about 2,000 uh, inhabitants of this small village. Also, um, we are working, for example, in uh, countries like uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tunisia. Uh, we had one seawater desalination project not long ago. Uh, the Tunisian uh, authorities are facing a big pressure when it comes to immigration. This project is located at the Tunisian-Libyan border, and uh, the the pressure on this small village, on this small fishing community uh, is, is very big because they uh, have to take care of several refugees that are arriving from the sub-Saharan region. So this containerized water treatment unit uh, that uses seawater directly is providing drinking water to the local fishermen and to these refugees. All of these systems are fully automated, uh, which also helps us to make the systems more optimized to reduce chemical and electricity consumption as much as possible. We are also paying a huge attention on the education and on the training of these operators. So we are not just leaving the equipment there after we installed and commissioned it, but we are also trying to transfer the knowledge that we have in order to be able to operate these systems efficiently. We also developed some projects in the past in Cuba. Um, and. Um, this system is also very similar to the one in Tunisia, using uh, surface water. Then in Peru, in 2016, there were uh, big earthquakes that destroyed uh, water infrastructure and uh, piping networks in several villages. So the Hungarian government, in this case as well, donated a containerized water treatment unit that is supplying drinking water to about 5,000 uh, people. You can see some uh, pictures here, also when we are doing the training for the local operators um, who are confident now to use the technology by themselves. Also, um, we have a special type of equipment, for example, that are used by uh, the armed forces of certain countries. Uh, this equipment is specifically designed for disaster situations and emergency situations. Um, Due to climate change, many countries are facing issues with extreme weather conditions. Uh, the frequency of typhoons, hurricanes, floods are becoming more apparent than previously. And uh, these compact units are movable, so that is why it can be easily shipped and transported to the area of the disaster location. We are able to treat with that equipment surface water, such as lakes, rivers, underground water, and also seawater. And by, with one of those equipments, we can supply drinking water to about uh, 50,000 people. But of course, depending on the source of water, this capacity can uh, change. Uh, these are plug-and-play units. Uh, when we bring it to the disaster site, basically the commissioning and installation of these equipments can take place in a couple of hours. This means that we do not have to bring water from several hundred kilometers to the disaster area, but we can supply it to the affected population right at the stage. Um, you can see some information about the capacity of these equipments. And uh, basically, uh, these photos are taken from our premises where we had a staff from the Philippines whom we trained there for two weeks uh, regarding the operation of uh, these kind of uh, equipments. In 2020, we had uh, a very big typhoon uh, in, uh, in the northern part of the Philippines, in Catanduanes, Bicol region, where um, several uh, people had to be displaced, their houses have been destroyed, the water infrastructure, the electricity infrastructure was uh, also damaged. So we delivered this equipment to the uh, Philippine Armed Forces uh, in October, and right after, in November, they shipped in uh, these uh, units to the disaster area. Also, another advantage of this equipment is that uh, we are able to run it uh, with a, a generator as well. So if the electricity network is destroyed in the disaster area, we are still able to use uh, the equipment to produce drinking water. In this case, they were using uh, water from a small creek, from a small canal. 
And then, at the end, the Red Cross was distributing drinking water to the local population. Also, we have several references from the uh, Middle East and North African region, where um, water is a, um, a very important commodity. And in many countries of the region, we are facing serious shortages. Uh, shortages. Um, for example, we have one huge industrial uh, water treatment project in Egypt. The Egyptian government is planning to reduce the extraction of water from the Nile River. And that is why they decided also to go for a zero liquid uh, technology at the end. It means that we are taking water from the Nile River, we are processing it for different industrial processes. Then, in the uh, hydrocracking complex, uh, the wastewater that is generated, it is sent to a wastewater treatment plant, and then we are treating further the already treated wastewater, and we are reusing it for the industrial processes. By this technology, we are able to generate at the end basically sludge and some salt with a 92% uh, dry solid content, which means we are wasting only a very few amount of water and we are decreasing our uh, environmental impact. Here in Qatar, we are having uh, one project with Baladna. Um, it is also a desalination project providing uh, drinking water for the animals of uh, the company. Also, water is used in various sectors. In the Emirates, for example, we had one project where we also provided uh, seawater, uh, we treated seawater that is used to wash the surface of solar panels. Some pictures about the technology. Um, and I would like to conclude my presentation uh, with some information about Hungary's engagement in organizing several international summits and conferences where water and environmental sustainability has a crucial importance. In the past three years, um, we organized three Budapest Water Summit events where the focus point of these discussions was the sustainability of our planet, the sustainable use of our water resources. Um, we could welcome um, uh, thousands of presenters and uh, um, representatives of several uh, countries in these events and we are always organizing a sustainability expo where Hungarian companies are able to demonstrate their newest achievements and newest uh, uh, research uh, outcomes. This year, in uh, December, the first week of December, the Hungarian government is organizing Planet Budapest 2021, which is going to be an even bigger event uh, because this year, uh, we are going to have exhibitors from the V4 country, countries, which means Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary. And this conference and uh, uh, summit aims to raise awareness, actually, about our environmental, economic, and social practices, and um, also how the negative trends that we are uh, facing could be maybe reversed, and how we could make our planet sustainable in the future. Um, there is also a small image video that I would like to show you. And of course, this event is possible to uh, attend physically, but most of the presentations, the discussions are also going to be streamed online. So I cordially invite you to participate in this event as well. I apologize for the sound and thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.